Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited one of the keynote speakers of our blockchain open forum, Mr. Pietro A. Doran, the managing principal of First Rock Associates and the co-founder and president of DreamChain. Welcome. Thank you very much. So could you give a brief introduction about yourself? Uh, well, first of all, uh, <laughs> Pietro Doran uh, Yuko, uh, managing principal of First Rock Associates in Milan. <laughs> uh, I've been in Korea uh, really working and living, raising families and doing everything uh, for nearly 23 years. Mm. Uh, I was Korea's first, I created for Korea's first uh, real estate uh, advisory company. Mm -hmm. um, I created its first 100% foreign owned real estate advisory and then moved on to investment banking. Uh, and to smart city developments through mm -hmm. Sungdo, and then to raising my own private equity funds, all so, involving real estate I'm in curious, Korea. <laughs> I'm curious to ask about your project in Sungdo. Sure, everybody. So, which always. part? I mean, of course. So, which part in Sungdo project did you take part in? Well, I was a founding partner, so there was no. There was no Sungdo. Yes, twenty three years time. ago. <laughs> well, not that. Well, this would have been two thousand one. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was nothing called Sungdo City in that, mm -hmm. at that time. It was called Media Valley. Mm -hmm. It was going to be, and it was actually originally a Daewoo project, mm -hmm. and it was going to uh, be built out as Korea's uh, equivalent of Silicon Valley. Uh, unfortunately, it ran into problems and went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And uh, through a lot of complicated and you know, almost miraculous uh, <laughs> uh, circumstances. I was finally approached by a small group uh, who knew me through my Morgan Stanley connection mm -hmm. and asked if I would join them in this uh, initiative to restructure this, what was once Media, Media. Valley and to go and build a city on the water uh, <laughs> because it was all underwater at the time <laughs> and uh, so I literally was a founding partner of New Sungdo City. So moving on to our next topic, sure. First Rock Associates, mm -hmm. it is a world-renowned fund based in Hong Kong. It's not a fund, it's, uh, we're an investment management company. Oh, investment management company. We operate in all, all sectors of the real estate including uh, capital, uh, you know, investment, mm -hmm. um, planning, um, structuring of, of, of investments mm -hmm. on behalf of Koreans and third parties to mm -hmm. make development, acquisition, management uh, as, as efficient as possible. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And you are the managing principal of this firm. Right. So on your perspective, from uh, personally, what is your take on Korean real estate? That's a good one because I've been here since 1993 mm -hmm. when I was literally the first foreigner to, to even think about setting up a real estate business in a market at the time that was considered the most insular mm -hmm. country in Asia. And it had just transitioned from basically dictatorship mm -hmm. uh, into first stage of what became one of Asia's most dynamic democracies. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was a really interesting time to be there. And the government had instituted policies to put the average, I think the housing ratio at the time, the people who lived in houses that needed houses mm -hmm. um, was only 40%. Mm -hmm. And they, they initiated, I think it was called, I think it was the Two Million Homes Initiative or something. Anyway, I came in just at that time when there was a boom in real estate because what the government had really done was create something which was pretty miraculous. They took a population that had no assets mm -hmm. and they gave that population an asset. It's called a house. Mm -hmm. And they made it affordable to a large number of people. But they didn't just build the house. They built the roads and infrastructure and everything to support that. So suddenly places that were once far away by small connector roads and stuff, could go back and forth to Seoul pretty efficiently. 
that, of course, increased the value of those houses. Mm -hmm. So suddenly people had asset wealth that never had assets before mm -hmm. and suddenly could now borrow on that or trade upwards. But they suddenly had wealth, and that wealth allowed them to then spend, send kids to better schools, mm -hmm. um, be able to work, have more choices about where to work, mm -hmm. um, go even on vacations sometime, put money in the bank, mm -hmm. and save for the next investment, which when they sold their place, because the values were skyrocketing as infrastructure got better, sorry, infrastructure got better, um, that really drove the economic miracle, I would call it, uh, between 1989, even though there was recessions and whatnot, uh, all, all the way through the 90s that really laid the foundations for Korea's modern economy. It was that housing program, in my opinion. Mm. So you are here at the Blockchain Open Forum, right? And which su suggests that you are very interested in turning real estate into blockchain. Well, that's good, too. You're asking good questions, actually. Regulation-wise, well, taxes, all the regulations related to block uh, real estate, when it taps into the area of blockchain, it can get tricky. I have been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when I came here, Korea was the most complicated, really the most complicated place to live. Mm -hmm. Its laws were really complicated. Its real estate laws were unclear. Um, transaction, transfer of assets, uh, tax policies towards it were opaque. Um, real estate traded with, with very little information. Mm -hmm. um, there were no income-based valuations and, and that sort of thing. Interest rates for mortgages were around 18%. 18%. 18%. Nobody had credit cards mm -hmm. at that time. Um, so that was the environment I walked in. Mm -hmm. Okay? And my thesis, my value proposition, what, value, what problem you're trying to solve, that's always the first thing of any, mm -hmm. any initiative, uh, is foreign companies who are coming into Korea, and Korea had to open its markets, and knew it did, in order to ensure access to other markets offshore. Mm -hmm. It was just the compromise that had to happen. Had no idea how you buy a piece of real estate. Had no idea what Chunsei was. Had no idea what Wolsei was, you mm -hmm. know, and Pojugum and this and that, and how. They had no idea how you, you couldn't own that real estate in the 90s. It was mm -hmm. prohibited, except for some very, very limited basis. Mm -hmm. um, and most of what was available was really surplus office space that Chebul's sort of controlled and decided would rent on, for prestige or at future uh, stock as they grew. Mm -hmm. It was the most complex market in so many ways. So when you ask me to fast forward to now, <laughs> it's not a big deal to me. Uh, because well, because I know the Koreans are not. I know. I think I know the government. I've never. It's never really prohibited. What it's tried to do is adapt, mm -hmm. and be able to adapt to, to a point where it can control, in order to protect citizens from scandals mm -hmm. as much as it can, uh, because that's what creates unrest and mm -hmm. social anger, mm -hmm. um, and that's what diminishes trust mm -hmm. into the financial industries which are the lifeblood of any economy. Mm -hmm. So I am absolutely confident that what happens in Korea is policy is driven by what I call the alignment of self-interest, not mutual interest. Mm -hmm. Enough parties see it in their interest that something should happen and they create the framework for how that happens. They create a consensus for why it should happen mm -hmm. and in the way it should happen. And then get out of the way because mm -hmm. it's going to rocket from there. Mm -hmm. So I have absolutely every confidence that Korea has no intention of being left behind. <laughs> okay? What it's doing right now is going through the process of aligning the self-interest, the mm -hmm. parties, the disparate parties, anyone or anyone who could lose or be 
left behind or, or not be in a position to take advantage of. And to minimize chaos and systemic imbalance. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm in a perfect time to be a startup mm -hmm. because I will then be able to adapt and, and, and anticipate those and incorporate those policies mm -hmm. and expectations of policies into the very framework of our organization. So when it skyrockets, so will I. <laughs> so in your past days, you emphasized greatly on the timing of investments. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you gave a little bit of answer to this question, but is it time to invest in real estate or real estate related crypto? Oh, real estate related well, crypto. That's kind I mean, of like crypto it. overall then. Well, no, I would argue there's almost no real estate crypto at this point anyway. Mm -hmm. As you may have heard on my panel, uh, one of my key questions are, was, is there really any real estate platform on the blockchain that's truly up and running at scale? Yes. And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first of all, you, you probably really can't find a, a viable crypto anyway mm -hmm. at this point. I would say there's always good timing in any market. Mm -hmm. You just have to truly understand, you have to ask yourself, why are you investing in this particular asset Mm -hmm. Whether it's you're buying bundles of, see, real estate's complicated. You're buying bundles of loans, which is real estate, mm -hmm. uh, or you're buying a building, or you're buying uh, uh, a long term management lease. Mm -hmm. Where's the state of distribution? Is that changing? Does it need to change? Does it need better efficiencies that you can now build and because the market's changed? But mm -hmm. the old, if you look at the logistic pricing of older logistics, it's crashing. Mm -hmm. now, you see, there's always an arbitrage. Mm -hmm. It's just you must always be seeing the whole market and looking for those moments of arbitrage. So there's never... The great time, or there's, the best thing that ever happened to me was the IMF. Mm -hmm. Because suddenly, hundreds of investment funds from around the world came to Korea. And I was the only real estate company at the time. There was no CBREs or LaSalle's or any of those people. And I ended up selling my business to Morgan Stanley and becoming Morgan Stanley overnight. <laughs> That was a real estate deal in its way, a mm -hmm. derivative. <laughs> I mean, thank you so much for a great insight on the history of Korean yeah. real estate. I mean, it's, it's so touching to hear it from, it's so like momentous to hear from a foreigner, <laughs> <laughs> truly. So during your 23... I, I, I guess the question it begs is, how long do you have to be in Korea before you're not really a foreigner anymore? <laughs> <laughs> in, in New York, if you're a Korean who moved to New York after 10 years, we pretty much say you're from New York. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess from this now, I mean, from this point, you're a Korean. You can say from the bottom of your heart. You're Korean if everybody sees you as one. You're mm -hmm. not if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so as our last comment, I would like to ask you to give your last comment in Korean. Would that be m too much of a trouble for you? Yeah, probably. What do you <laughs> want me to say? <laughs> Just a short clip for like thanking our audience. Yagi Hanun <laughs> got. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, just, uh, we also thank you greatly for your time. I'm pretty sure you're a busy man, but uh, we'll wrap up the interview. Did now. I say that right? <laughs> I think so. I think pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I say, you know, I like to think I actually can speak some Korean. It's just that nobody understands. Me. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much. I, I enjoyed sharing ideas. And, and thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Pietro A. Doran the managing principal of First Rock Associates and the co-founder and president of DreamChain.